Adobe just released a massive update to Lightroom, which adds HDR or high dynamic range support. This means you can finally display the full detail and color from your RAW files. For example, to show a sunset, which is both bright and colorful. And HDR support is now offered on every platform. So you can now edit and view HDR photos with Lightroom on your Android, iPhone, or iPad. And just a quick note before we start, this video itself is available in HDR, which means it'll look much better on a supporting display where you'll see a red HDR indicator. Let's start in the develop module of Lightroom Classic, where we've got a scene which is properly exposed in the foreground, but of course looks blown out in the sky. And the problem here is not in the RAW file. The problem is that a standard dynamic range display simply cannot keep up with the details of the RAW file. And so we have to make some kind of trade-off or compromise in our processing. Maybe we want to go and grab the exposure slider and bring it down. And here you can see clearly the RAW file has the data in the sky but now we've lost the foreground. This doesn't look right. This is not a compelling image. So let's undo that. We could instead try and do some kind of local adjustment to the sky, such as maybe bringing down the highlight slider. And in doing so again, we bring back the color in the sky, but it doesn't look correct because the sky is the light source for the scene. There's no way that the sunset should be the same brightness as the shadow side of these hills in the valley down below. It makes no sense at all. So let's undo that. That doesn't work either. What we really want is to make these pixels brighter and more colorful the way that they truly are in the raw data. And that's what HDR or high dynamic range can do for us. On a supporting display, when you enable this in Lightroom, you're gonna see a much brighter, more colorful sky. It looks beautiful. And if you're not watching this video on an HDR monitor, you really should check one out to understand exactly what I'm talking about. This is a much more compelling photograph now that we have these HDR pixels. And what's happened here is they've pushed brighter than the standard range of our display. The way that the edit controls work here, they're pretty much all the same thing we're used to. The biggest difference is gonna be the histogram and where these pixels fall. When I'm in the standard mode, I've got a zero black to 255 white range. When I turn on the HDR mode, the left-hand side is zero to 255 or this SDR range or standard dynamic range. The right-hand side, the HDR range, each of these is one stop brighter than the old SDR white. So this is the old limit on a standard monitor and everything to the right is something brighter, something you can't do on a standard monitor. So you'll need an iPhone or an Android or a new Mac laptop or one of these brighter, more capable displays. And there's quite a few of them out there now. And now we can show these pixel values with HDR. Just to show you visually what that looks like, if I right click on the canvas and choose white, this is the maximum pixel value in the SDR range. And these are my HDR pixels. So when I'm in the SDR range, you can see clearly white is white and it clips to that limit. Whereas when I turn in the HDR mode, I have brighter, more capable pixels. And that's the beauty of this mode. Now I'm going to go back to the kind of normal displays when I'm this distracting background. But with this histogram here, as I mentioned, you've got four stops over range, and this is showing you where those pixels lie. A few other things you need to know about this display. As I move around it, notice the readout below the histogram here. I can see right now my red pixel value shows plus 1.9 or 1.9 stops greater than SDR white, meaning that's kind of right around the second bar here. And as I move around, I'll see different pixel values. So right now I can see that red's in the HDR range, but green and blue are just shy of SDR white. They're like 99% and 90%. So it just kind of shows you visually with these values being plus for values in terms of number of stops for HDR or percentage or zero to 255 numbers. If I right click, I can choose whether I get the percentages or not. If I turn this off, now I see the old uh, numbers, you know, zero to 255. I personally like these percentages, so I turn that on. Now, anything in orange like this is going to be an HDR pixel, and you can get a visual overlay of that as well. If you go turn on the highlight warning here, if I hover, or click on it or hit the J shortcut key. So these are all my HDR pixels and none of them are blown out because none of them are red. If I go and start making these pixels brighter, you'll start seeing clipping. If I go push this exposure up, I eventually get to a place where these pixels are clipped and that's what's shown here. These red areas are beyond the limits of my display. Now, unlike in SDR mode, these pixels are lost forever because that's the ultimate limit of SDR. In the HDR mode, this is the limit of my screen at its current brightness. But if I turn down the brightness or I go switch to a more capable screen, 
I may have more headroom. So these brighter pixel values in the red range, they're not necessarily lost. If I go share this image with someone else who has a more capable screen, they'll actually be able to see this up to this HDR limit, which is four stops, which happens to be the exact right edge of this histogram. So by default here, anything on this histogram until you clip the right edge of this would be visible on a proper HDR display and a less capable display would tone map in a browser, meaning it would safely recover those values. It's just going to squeeze things a little bit to show on that screen. So this warning here is not really telling me that I've lost data. It's telling me that I'm not seeing it accurately on my display. So if I hit J to turn that off, you can see these are clipped HDR pixels and they don't necessarily look terrible. I can certainly edit this way, but if I bring this back down, you know, here I'm kind of more back in range. If I hit J, I can see yeah, I've got a little bit of clipping here. It looks fine. So you can decide how far you want to push things. The right edge of the histogram, the thing you really need to worry about is what is this limit, which is by default the right edge of the histogram. But this little gray area here is letting you know the areas that are clipped, as are these red areas, or when you hover those pixels, the red in the readouts there. So a little bit different way of working with things because you're not necessarily losing that data, which is kind of a, a nice thing, a little more flexibility with HDR, but it's a new paradigm. Aside from that, uh, most of these tools work pretty much the same way. Uh, just kind of working down the rest of the list, there is this option for visualize HDR. When I turn this on, it shows an overlay of all the HDR pixels and they're by stops. So zero to one stop over SDR is cyan and then one to two is blue and they've got kind of a purple and I don't have anything up in this three to four plus range for magenta, but it just kind of shows you the pixel values. And it's very helpful if you want to edit two specific targets because the goal here is not necessarily to push everything to the brightest possible pixel value. That would be annoying and, and not very artistically great. You want to think carefully about, you know, should you use HDR at all? And if so, how much? And not necessarily just push all the way to the limits. And this visualization is a great way to help you do that. Because if I want to edit to just maybe like two stops, well, I could go and pull this image back, maybe a little bit the highlights or something to try and contain things within a slightly different edit range, if that's my goal. Next on the list, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to keep it the way it was. Next on the list is this SDR rendition settings. And this is not going to change the HDR version of the image. When you open this up, what this allows me to do is work on a degraded SDR version of the image. Because if I share this image with someone who does not have an HDR display, I want them to see the best possible image, something that compares to what I would have given them if I wasn't editing for HDR. That's what this does here. It's going to determine that fallback version of the image, which I covered in great detail in my previous video on gain maps. But just to briefly go through it here, if you turn on this preview for SDR display, we're now seeing an SDR version of the image. It's been cut back to the SDR range. You can see the HDR range is completely turned off here. And what these sliders allow you to do is determine how it gets converted from HDR to SDR. So if you just left it up to the browser, it won't make the best choices for you. What Adobe is doing is giving you seven different ways to control the SDR version. And it's a very powerful thing. So for example, I feel like this is not showing enough separation between sky and foreground. So maybe I want to bring down the brightness a little bit and bring up the whites, try and punch up that sky a little bit, maybe even let it kind of move to that slightly blown out look, push up the highlights a little bit, try and create a little more separation there. If I toggle between the HDR and the SDR, it's a little bit dark. So I'm going to push up my shadows a tiny bit, maybe bring down the clarity somewhere in that range and maybe push up the highlights saturation a little bit, see if I can get a little more. So, you know, as I toggle this back and forth, I mean, clearly the HDR version looks better because that's the point. HDR is a better display for these images or we wouldn't use it. So when you turn on this preview for SDR display, you should expect it's not going to look as good. That's, that's not the goal. The goal is to make it look as good as possible to share with someone who doesn't have access to an HDR monitor. That's what this is all about. And when you're done adjusting this, other than exporting it, you should just leave this kind of unchecked so it doesn't affect your display. And, and you can leave it unchecked for exporting too. I shouldn't say it that way. It's really just for that export setting. Other than that, it's not a real part of the HDR edit itself. Other than that, the one other thing that's kind of different in this setup is the tone curve. So you'll notice that this histogram and this histogram are, they're, they're mirrored. The left-hand side of this is SDR range. 
the right hand side is the HDR range. So this tone curve now covers a broader range. If I go and switch, let's go kind of hide the histogram for a second here. If I go back to the standard mode, you see how that changed? And notice the values here. The top left shows the values. So I go from 0 to 255 when I'm in the SDR range. When I turn on HDR, the range now goes up to that 255 for SDR white, but then it pushes into the HDR range, which goes all the way up to 500 at the top. So we have an ability to adjust curves up into the HDR range. And one consequence of that is if you've made some kind of change to the tone curve and you toggle between HDR and SDR mode, it will alter the image differently. For example, if I go push up the lights here, well, that's affecting this curve. And then if I go and turn off HDR, I'm still using that curve shape, but it's being applied over the SDR range, not over that extended range. And notice my foreground changed here. So if you're working with existing images and you turn on HDR and you see unexpected changes, I would go directly down to this tone curve and probably reset it and, and readjust it because the, the SDR and HDR curves, they're very different and you can't just copy the values from one to the other. Other than that, pretty much everything works the same way. Let's go explore some other examples of how you can work with this tool. So in this case, I've got a cityscape. It's got a lot of bright values. I'm losing some separation of the highlights. The lights don't necessarily glow the way I want. I could bring down the exposure, but by the time the lights look more attractive, I'm losing the shadows. It's the same problem we had in the previous image. So let's undo that. And instead, let's go turn on the HDR mode. And now the city just lights up. It glows and looks gorgeous. And I'm so thrilled with images that look this way. I think it really shows cityscapes in a totally different way than we've ever had before because these night scenes have so much contrast and the raw files really do capture a lot of it. So this is a great way to work with the scenes like this. And if you're looking closely, you notice the name of this file says dash HDR because I created this by using the old merge to HDR feature in Lightroom. If I go select multiple images, right click and choose photo merge HDR or HDR panorama, it will take multiple RAWs and create one new raw file with an extended dynamic range. And this is not a new feature, but in the past, it just gives you more dynamic range without giving you more ability to display the pixels. Now we can actually display the pixels. And so there's more benefit to that kind of editing. And it's not something you need to do for most images. Most of my HDR edits don't use multiple raw files. Some of them don't use raw files at all. Some of them are even JPEGs, but you can use it and you'll get more value out of it when you're in the HDR mode. Let's look at our next image here. Kind of a classic interior scene with a blown exterior. And if I want to try and restore more of this detail outside, just turning on the HDR mode shows a lot more content there. And this is a pretty extreme dynamic range here. If I was showing the you know, four stops of headroom on my monitor dimmed down further, I could see even more detail outside. So it kind of depends on your, your overall headroom limit, but you can see that there's clearly some interesting advantages to a scene like this. And I don't have to do complex blending to start getting the, the benefit of that with this HDR display. This next scene, it's a bit different. Uh, nothing here is really, you know, here's the SDR version. Nothing's blown out. I haven't really lost the color. I haven't lost detail. But what I don't have is a clear exit point. I got this nice visual path. So it's getting a little bit weaker. And this guy's not quite pulling the viewer's eye through the scene. Whereas in HDR, that little kiss of extra brightness brings you visually through the scene. It makes it more compelling. It's a very small piece of the image. And oftentimes the best HDR is just like that. It's a little bit of the image that gets improved and it enhances the overall artistic effect. It's not about making the whole image super bright. And that's definitely not the goal with HDR. And this is a good example of just judicious use of HDR to improve a scene. And then this last image here, I've got a black and white scene because of course we can use HDR in black and white as well. And with this, the sky could be a little bit more moody and interesting. And I'd like to you know, help the viewer's eye through the scene even more. So let's go turn on the HDR mode. That's bringing out some of that detail there. It's a pretty subtle shift. You can see I'm only moving about a stop or so to the HDR range, and that just happens to be where the pixels lie. I'm gonna push things even further. So if you don't get enough pop out of turning on the HDR mode, you just go and edit the image as you normally would. So I'm gonna push up the light slider on the curve here, and let's go hit J so we can see the overlay and see where we are. Here we can see 
right up there. I'm starting to clip on my monitor, so I'm gonna back off to about there. So I was just looking at that little red bit of pixels there where it was clipping. And so here I've kind of pushed the limits of my display. I feel like it's a little bright in the foreground and I'm gonna go and just kind of darken the overall exposure and that's pulling me off the edge here as well, which I'm not gonna worry about pushing to the limits because it's not about hitting the limits of the display. That was just kind of a guide to know when I'm hitting the max. But I think this is a much more compelling image. If we look from before in SDR, to after in HDR, we've got that subtle shift that I think makes this a much more compelling image. Now, once you've done all your great edits, of course, you wanna be able to share this and that's something else which is supported in Lightroom. So let's go back to our first image and let's go adjust this SDR rendition settings. So these are all the settings that are gonna affect the SDR version and I'm gonna export as a JPEG gain map, meaning the SDR and the HDR version both go into the same file and it's gonna pull from this version of the image. And like I said, I covered this previously in my video on game maps, I'll link that below. Let's just use these as they are. We'll go switch over to the library. Doesn't matter whether they have the preview on or off, it's gonna use it in both cases. In the library here, we do not have support for HDR currently. So what you'll see will be a clipped version of your image. Hopefully we'll see support soon, but you can work with it very easily regardless. And what we wanna do now is go to export the image. And I've got a couple different presets. Most of the time I export through my WebSharp Pro software, which allows interactive cropping and some other things I like to do with my images. But in this case, I just wanna use the built-in interface in Lightroom to show you the new tools. So to export as a JPEG gain map, you need to go to file settings, make sure image format is set to JPEG. You could use JPEG XL or AVIF for HDR, but they don't support gain maps right now. So you wanna choose JPEG, and then you wanna turn on this HDR output. When you turn this on, you're then telling it to export with both the standard JPEG SDR and the HDR gain map. So it's not saying gain map, but the JPEG with HDR is going to be a gain map and we'll have a version that'll look great on any display. Now you wanna choose your color space and a safe option would be sRGB if you're gonna to upload to social media or other sites that may strip the profile. Of course, that will also strip the gain map at this time. But if you're sharing on your own website where you can safely share a gain map, I would just share as P3 because that'll be supported and it'll look even better. The one last thing I'll note about this is we're really pushing the limits of the JPEG format and you probably want to turn up the quality setting a little bit higher than you're used to. So if you normally do say 75%, think about 85, maybe even 90 plus percent quality, especially if you have a smooth sky to avoid any sort of artifacts with a JPEG game map. You just got to push that quality up a little bit. Other than that, everything else works the same. So I've got my quality, I got my JPEG and HDR for game map. I just hit export and I've now created my HDR export. The one last thing here is within the library module, aside from exporting, you may want to sort for your images. And right now you can't see the HDR version. And it's very helpful to know which ones are HDR. So let's go and let's make one of these not HDR anymore. So if I go back to the develop module, because they're all HDR, let's turn it off here. So now we'll go back and I've got four of these five are HDR. If you go and search for metadata, there's now this new HDR edit mode at the bottom of the list. And when you sort to on, you're sorting for images which use the HDR mode. If you sort for off, you'll have your SDR images. And of course you can sort for everything if you just wanna turn off the filter. But that's a quick and easy way to find images you've already edited for HDR. Now click on this next video to learn more about HDR.